Okay, folks, it's uh, seven plus in here, and um, uh, we're starting up the third week. I um, hope you had a good weekend and everything, and we're able to get um, going on all the show of videos. And um, I want to go through right now a little bit of where we are in the class and what we're undertaking right now with the second essay on Shoah. Okay, so a few things right now. You should be wrapping up uh, watching all the Shoah um, videos and getting through them. And I know it can be a, a good, good, good amount of time. It can take a while. Um, but it's absolutely necessary so we can uh, stay on top of things and get going on the first essay. Um, the other element I want to make sure everybody's aware of is making sure you're through chapter one in the um, grammar book. So you should have been able to watch the videos on bad grammar, good writing, and finish the exercises on chapter one. Okay, so you should be through all of that. And we're going to be starting up chapter two in working through that next week. Now, um, so you should have completed that, and you should be starting on two and working through the parts of speech. Um, that one we will be going through pretty quickly um, because it's parts of speech and it really reviews something most of you should already be familiar with. Okay, so um, so we're going to get through one this week. There is a quiz on Thursday. Um, so the quiz is already in the assignments. So you're going to go in there. It's going to I'm going to open it up, and you can complete it any time that day, from 4 a.m. in the morning till 11:59 at night. It's a multiple choice quiz. You can do it um, any time during that day. Um, again, so when you've got unlimited time to do it, and it just reviews the main concepts of Chapter One. Okay, so make sure you get um, have that in your schedule. Um, to complete that day and you should be starting on chapter two already and going through the review of um, the different uh, parts of speech and how I approach it okay so keep going on that <clears throat> okay now the other assignment I, I want to make sure everybody started on this and gets going on it so because the initial stages on this essay are absolutely essential okay and now I've posted this now we did go a little bit over the assignment sheet, a little bit over what we're going to be doing, which is working with testimonies from this movie Showa. And what the movie does, and what you can see already, is that the movie is it's Cloud Lawnsman with, with an interpreter, and he's going around and interviewing people who survived the Holocaust, um, you know, the Showa. Um, from World War II. So, and this was uh, an attempt to exterminate the Jewish population throughout Europe. And um, one th of the things I hope is clear, it it is often misrepresented as something that the Germans did. Um, instead, what you get from watching this movie, and, and folks who do know the history, know it wasn't just a German thing. It was all of Europe turned on its Jewish population. Um, and they had no ability or really no significant ability to defend themselves um, with a military. So it was a European issue. It just got, um, you know, concentrated as a um, problem within Germany. And so um, the Germans were the ones who undertook the Holocaust. Um, so in this, this is part of why I really want to emphasize you don't want to stereotype. Um, either the, the Germans, the Polish witnesses, or the Jewish survivors, um, any in any certain way. This was a, a European issue. And the Americans, even the Americans, had a problem with uh, kind of turning their backs on the issue. But that's not the focus of this unit. So I, I want you to avoid stereotyping any particular group. I really want to emphasize that. But I also want you to not um, sugarcoat anything. Um, the testimonies in here are, can be quite harsh um, and are extremely valuable to understand, you know, what led to this. What were the mindsets, and what are the mindsets that allow people to forget what um, what happened? And so, um, so I want to be very clear about that. Um, avoid stereotyping, taking one person's testimony and overgeneralizing um, to all people, and um, you know, try to pay attention to the details. Don't sugarcoat, but don't stereotype either. So that's what we're going after, and that's what we're going to do. So what you're not going to do is try to cover the entire film. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to focus on one point at a time, and you can choose the focus that um, that you want to uh, work on. Um, <clears throat> two of the areas that are really there's three areas that I've posted. Um, two of the areas really are what we um, get for the um, um, for the discussion area. Um, Chelmno with um, Simon Shrebnik 
and the villagers. Um, you get them around them talking about what was going on um, in Chelmno. And then you get the many of the villagers talking about it. Um, that's in the first 26 minutes of the video. So um, and let me go to that just for a moment so everybody understands. Um, when we go to that, go to the show of videos. Um, and here they are. This is the Chelmno. And uh, and I usually advise um, bouncing this out. And then you go through the first 26 minutes. And you get Simon Shrebnik talking it through and walking through what he remembers. And Michael, um, and again, I can never really pronounce his name properly, Plotnich. Um, and the others. And then you get people in the um, village talking about what was happening too. Now, you can, if you want to, go through more of the video. I've had a number of students watch the whole thing. You can use other parts of the movie if you want to, if you want to write about it. But just be careful and try to focus. Now, I'm giving folks a lot of room to create their own parameters um, with what they want to cover and what they don't want to cover. Um, the focus is what allows you to give insight. Um, limitations allow you to give insight and be creative. And that's um, kind of ironic that a limitation allows you um, to create something new. You need to create that limitation. Um, that limitation can be about writing about Chelmno. Um, that's one limitation. You can write just about Treblinka. You can write just about, um, you can write about Treblinka in the tunnel. Both um, uh, uh, Bamba and Shikomo talk about the tunnel leading into the gas chambers. Both of them do in very clear um, uh, manners. You can just write about that. You can write about what was going on inside the chamber, relying more heavily on uh, Bamba. Um, you provide that focus. So I want you to do that early on by finding the quotations that you think are most meaningful. And you can use, um, use both the movie and the book to find out what you think is most meaningful. You will be addressing the quotations that you get from the book um, or from the movie um, in dealing with the words and phrases. You can also deal with the um, mannerisms and the way they talk about things. So get those um, chosen early on. Okay, So get those segments chosen early on. I've made some choices. Um, about what I thought was most meaningful and what students have found most useful in the past. And the Sukomal testimony is very useful because you get an, um, somebody who is actually in a position of authority talking about everything that was there. And again, I know some people are a little bit troubled by the fact that this was done without his permission. But please understand, this man was present during one of the most horrific events in uh, world history. Um, his right to privacy, I do believe, is trumped by the importance of his uh, testimony about what happened. So when uh, uh, Franz Lanzmann does expose him um, because of the importance of this and the importance of what he's saying, um, he doesn't have the right to privacy when so many hundreds of thousands of people were murdered um, just at Treblinka um, and millions were murdered in the other camps. And so he explains what was um, done. Um, and you get into the way people remember, um, how they remember certain events, but also how they forget. And it's very important to keep that in mind. Both Sukomo and Bamba remember certain things very clearly and forget certain things. In a, in a, it sounds odd, but it's a very active forgetting. They are involved in their forgetting. Um, for very different reasons. The same thing happens with Chelmno. You have certain people remembering certain things. And if I go into this one again, um, well, I already had that one open. I should go back into where I was. Um, um, you have people remembering certain things and forgetting certain things for reasons. They, they have motivated reasons for remembering and forgetting. Part of this is conscience. Um, where these people are, you know, operating in German society today, living their lives, and they don't want the Holocaust coming back to their lives. They want to live and have no problems and have no questions. Others are um, forgetting because there's so much emotional damage from what went on. And that happens with Bamba, that happens with Plodnich, and that happens uh, with Simon Shrebnik. Um, it's the ability to forget keeps you going about your day. Okay? So... Now, the one that I did not put up for something 
um, for folks to write about in the discussion area. Um, this is the last one. I went ahead and I left it up here because we fell behind today because of me. Um, I didn't put this one up as a discussion as required for the discussion. But if you are interested, I would encourage you to go to this one. Now, I originally only assigned you um, starting at 422. You can go to 422 and you get um, Glassler, um, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He was, uh, you know, a functionary in the one of the camps in the ghetto with managing the ghetto. And he was a young man at the time in his 20s. And he really emphasizes that they did not really know what was going on. And he glosses over things. And he you know makes things convenient you get to the nature of how the thinking was back then but also to how the nature of the thinking was um, today or it is you know how they remember it and how he glosses things over he did not it doesn't seem like he really wanted to know what was going on back then and so he was ex accepting what he was told and became a tool of the Third Reich um, but he was also very active in it and notice the way he accepted that, but he also continues to accept his role and what he did. And you get the same type of thing, but for very different reasons, um, from the other survivors of the ghetto. And these um, were people in the Warsaw Ghetto, um, uh, Jews trying to fight back, trying to get arms, trying to um, fight to the end, and what was going on. Um, and you get the problems with how they're remembering, and how they try to remember, and how they can't remember and Lon's been going back and, and pushing them, okay? So keep that in mind in all circumstances. In Chelmno, um, you get Michael Blodinich, um, again, forgive me for mispronouncing his name. You get him, uh, he's put his life together and he's in uh, Israel today. Um, you know, he's talking about when he finds his family um, and other things and it comes back. And this is, you saw him earlier um, he could. He had a chronic smile on his face um, when he was first sitting down. Um, notice how he remembers, but how he forgot, um, and the, uh, how he protected himself. And that always goes on. And you get the different people in different positions choosing or remembering in certain ways, either by choice or just by automatically doing it. Um, and just watch how they automatically do certain things, but how they consciously do certain things, how they accept to remember, how they accept to forget, and how they have to be pushed on certain things. So just be aware that as you go through, it's, it's not simple. And there's no simple situations with this. There's no simple understanding of it. Um, so go through it and go through it carefully, but get your focus right away. Okay. So what I do with everybody is I have them do this, much like we do with Antigone. I have an assignment sheet, rough draft for Shoah. What I want you to do is get, much like we did with Antigone, go ahead and download the sheet. I, I really encourage you to download it onto your computer. Okay, you can see that I can do this on mine. Um, I've already done it. So, um, and so, um, and then I open it up and notice what I'm doing here. I should show you um, if I move this out of the way. I have it on top of my computer, and that's how I get this you know, lavender stripe up here. Um, and this asks you to go through and get those three to six lines at the top of each page. This is rough draft. That's not how the final is going to look. But get the three to six lines from whomever you want, from Sukomo, from Srebnik, or whomever, talking about what was important or what you think is important. Describe how they talk about it. You know, Srebnik talks about it in this way and that way and the other way. Or one of the Polish um, witnesses, he talks about it this way when they're outside the church and talks about how they remember this and remember that and they remember his lovely singing voice. Notice what they don't remember is how well they knew what was going on. Um, and then tell me why you think those lines are important. That's your analysis of those lines. It's much like we did with Antigone. That process of analysis always does that. It cuts into something specific describes what's going on in those lines. And you can only do this when you get focused early on. Get your focus, then get your evidence. Describe what's going on, and then expect it to dawn on you. This is what's going on. I can see what Srebnik's doing here. Um, he's forgotten this, or he's remembering that. He's avoiding that, or he's talking about this. Okay. Um, 
And each time you're going to see that, there, there's going to be some element with the remembering, with the forgetting, and with Lonsman pushing them to try to understand what's going on. And you get your, um, and I've set it up so you can do this for four different quotations. Um, you get your quotations first. Um, I should say you get your focus first. What do you, what do you want to focus on? You can focus on Treblinka, the Warsaw Ghetto. You can focus on Chelno, whatever you want to do. Um, and then go into, get your quotations, about three to six lines, and that's a rule of thumb. Remember my thumb, okay? That's his advice. Um, get yourself enough to work with. Describe what's going on. Tell me what's going on in these lines, and then explain why they're important. Do that for four separate body paragraphs. That's going to get you through the early draft stage. Then you're going to have something. You're going to have the heart and soul of your essay once you get this done. Okay. And then in the middle draft stages, you're going to set the context, um, refine what you've done, develop it a little bit more and refine it um, and everything, and then towards and write your introduction and your thesis. What did we really learn from Sukomo and Bamba? Or what did we really learn from Srebnik and the Polish villagers? What did we learn um, from and Glassler and um, and the others and the um, ones who led the um, uh, resistance, Zimmerman and the others, or Zuckerberg and the others. Um, go through that, okay? Put it all together on your thesis, and that's what you're going to do with your essay. What you are not going to do, I want to be very clear about this. Um, I have already talked about don't stereotype um, any group, okay? Um, but be very clear and very straightforward about what you see going on in their testimony. That's what you're going to provide an insight into. You're not going to write about the Holocaust in general or World War II in general. You're going to focus on these testimonies within Shoah. That's what you're going to give an insight into. Um, you do not need to write a report, and I don't want a report on the Holocaust in general. That's not what we're after. Okay, So don't go general and don't go into outside research. Instead, the nature of analysis is to give insight into these words, into these um, phrases, into um, the testimonies of these individuals. That's what we're after, okay? So that's what we're working on. Um, and that's what you should be doing. I am going to finish up your first essays. I'm almost done with them, and I should be posting grades tonight. And that's on Tuesday the 16th. Now, what I'll be doing is finishing up. I do evaluations for everybody, and those should take a couple of days. Um, I'll do video evaluations and try to get them to you by Thursday evening. So you can review them by Thursday evening, if not Friday morning. Um, I'll try to get those to you to make them useful to you um, for your essays. Um, so I'll get the grades probably posted tonight. Um, please refrain from you know sending me too many questions about how did I get the grade, because I will be addressing all those issues in the videos. Okay. So keep at it, guys. I know it's a lot of work because we're doing this in the winter session, but keep at it. You're doing all right. Again, these first essays were overall pretty darn good. Um, compared to previous classes, these were generally stronger than what I've seen in the past. And that's a good sign. It means you guys are really working at it, and I appreciate that. All right, take care, folks.